We're continuing on in this podcasting series where we're talking about numerous self-publishing companies. And boy, this is going to be going deep into April. Uh, and we, I think we started back with the beginning of December. So this is exciting. I want to kind of break ground with a company that some of you may have heard of, Barnes & Noble. And they actually have a direct publishing option of Barnes & Noble Press. And uh, there are some folks that are looking for some alternatives to Kindle Direct Publishing, KDP, or even Ingram Spark, or even Draft a Digital, or somewhere else that they can kind of hang their hat. Is Barnes & Noble Press all that it's cracked up to be? Are they as good as KDP, or better, or even worse? Well, we're going to discuss that in today's podcast. So make sure that you stay tuned. And of course, I've got to give you a quick shameless self-promotion here because you can get access to theselfpublishinghub.com, my exclusive library of videos covering everything in the business from advanced publishing tactics to keyword research to behind the scenes content that'll help you level up your self-publishing business. This includes hundreds of videos, hours of footage, and content you won't find anywhere else for only $9.99 per month. Remember, it's the one, the only, theselfpublishinghub.com. Go on over there. It's a great way to help support the cause if you want to really gut dive deep. There are some people that charge an arm and a leg to get their, you know, their courses and such. Me, I like to make it accessible to everybody. So if you want to, you can always get it for one month and you can cancel it after you've binge watched everything and just come back to it when I have new videos because I'm always uploading new videos. It's usually about one to two, two new videos per week over there. All right, so let's transition over into Barnes & Noble Press. Now today is not going to be a very long one because there's not too much to really cover about Barnes & Noble Press. I can share some anecdotal, you know, uh, some some stories that I've had with Barnes & Noble Press, but I think it, it varies from one person to the next. Now, Barnes & Noble Press is a self-publishing platform that allows authors to publish and sell their own ebooks and print books online and in Barnes & Noble stores. There's a little bit of an asterisk next to the in the Barnes & Noble stores because yes, you'll make it available in their catalog, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to stock it on the shelves because you need to go and approach management about that on a store by store basis to see if they will stock that. So just as a heads up, they say that you can put it in their stores, but technically you got to go over and actually request that. Now it's free to use their platform in exchange for revenue share. Now I've explained revenue share a little bit on previous broadcasts, but let me go ahead and revisit this. Since it is free, what they're going to do is split the profits and it's going to vary based on the eBooks and print books. And I'm going to talk about each one of those royalty percentages that you can expect. But all I have to say this, free to go ahead and do there. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up. Barnes & Noble Press tends to be a little slower than most of the self-publishing platforms that are out there. They're slow in getting accounts set up. They're slow in processing some of the files. So just be prepared to be patient with them. Now, the biggest hang-up with Barnes & Noble Press is its U.S. distribution only since sales are made through bn.com, bn as in Barnes & Noble. So BN in, uh, Barnes & Noble Press is currently available for print and ebook publishing to authors and publishers in the following countries. This is the United States, United Kingdom, Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, France, Italy, Germany, Spain, the Netherlands, and Belgium. So if you didn't hear me mention your region, Chances are likely it's not accessible through there. So let's transition over into the two different types of publishing options that you have available. Let's start out with eBooks. Very first thing, distribution reach, it's going to seem kind of redundant, but I'm going to say it anyways. It's to bnn.com or bn.com, excuse me, and Nook devices and apps. So this means that people are able to purchase it through the Nook devices and the Nook app itself. The royalty for eBooks is 70% for all eBooks sold above 99 cents or more. So it looks like KDP in where you can't be able to make something for free. Now, do they do the price matching? I don't know. I haven't researched that before. Definitely something worth looking into, but this is kind of nice. They are doing the right thing, in my opinion, because 
over on KDP, they want you to price between $2.99 and $9.99 in order to get that 70% royalty. But here's the big catch over there as well, is you don't get 70% royalty in all regions. Well, Barnes & Noble, they're like 70% period. Just don't put anything down below 99 cents. We're not going to penalize you for any amount that you're pricing it for. So that's really good. If you really want to be valued at exactly what you're worth, then Barnes & Noble Press realizes that. And I think it would be really awesome if the KDP team would pay a lot closer attention to this royalty model because this is paying you your worth. 70% is pretty good. I think the only way it could get better is if it went up to 80% or even 100%. But look, I understand. They got to pay the bills at the end of the day. All right, let's transition over into print books. Now, this is where they excel. And this is my opinion here. Um, some people might disagree. But at any rate, their formats include paperback, hardcover, and hardcover with dust jacket. Their trim sizes, they had over 20. In fact, I actually counted in one area, it was 20, and another area it was 22. There was a lot of contradicting information, and there's some posts that are really old. I think Barnes & Noble Press needs to go through and audit some of their stuff and get rid of that because it does create some confusion. Now, the paper types that you can have include these three types. It's 50-pound white and cream paper. Those are separate ones. It's not white and cream paper all at once. 70-pound uh, white paper as well, so a little thicker. The ink options include black and white, standard color, and premium color. Now, I've kind of explained this before in other print-on-demand companies in that it starts out at the base cost for printing books. Base cost is what is assumed by the customer, not you. Remember, we're not having to pay a dime in order to distribute here. But because we're selling it through their platform, they still have to account for costs for printing it. So they take their distribution fee by way of the revenue share, as I had mentioned. So if we're starting at this base level, black and white is the cheapest option. You go up to standard color, it's more expensive, and you go to premium color, it's the most expensive. The same could be said with the 50 pound paper versus the 70 pound paper. It's going to jack up that price. Now the page count that you're allowed to have to up to is 18 to 800 pages. So if you have a super epic length novel, then chances are very likely, maybe this is not the platform for you. Um, there is one exception that I found, which was like a landscape style book at 11 by eight and a half. And that had a 400 page maximum. They have two cover finishes, which include matte and gloss. So something that is just flat, basic, kind of has that velvety feel to it. And the glossy one that a lot of people are kind of used to where it's nice and shiny. Uh, reminder here though, remember distribution and reach for print is us only i know it stinks it'd be nice if barnes and noble would be able to expand beyond the us but it's what we have and if for some reason you have a very uh large following in the us then it might work out for you now here's the royalty it's 55 percent minus the print cost now if we were to compare that to something like kdp kdp is 60 percent minus the print cost now Here's a fun fact for you to follow along with. Now, we all know, and I might have to kind of remind you on this one here, that KDP Print has the option for expanded distribution on their paperback books. Expanded distribution is fulfilled through Ingram Book Group. Now, Ingram Book Group, of course, is the parent company for Ingram Spark, as some of you might know, and also the parent group for Lightning Source. Now, Lightning Source predated Ingram Spark. They were kind of like originally the Ingram Spark. But at any rate, Barnes & Noble leans heavily on Lightning Source for their print fulfillment. So if you like the print quality that you have seen done through Ingram Spark, then you're probably going to like what they do through Barnes & Noble Press. It's pretty much comparable. So, and speaking of comparable, it's a fairly comparable price to KDP print. It's marginally higher than KDP. KDP is really good at that. Amazon's able to drive down costs and get books out a lot quicker than the other companies do. Now, 
someone make the argument that sometimes that sacrifice is quality, but that's all a matter of perspective here. But at any rate, comparable price. It's actually pretty good. I covered this in depth last year when I did a full print on demand comparison series where I put Barnes and Noble against other different platforms. And uh, I feel like they were pretty good, and especially when it came to quality and shipping time. All right, I want to transition over to something and it's going to probably confuse some of you. It's audiobooks. Now, there's a little bit of an asterisk next to it because it can't necessarily publish audiobooks through Barnes and Noble Press. To get distribution to Barnes and Noble for your audiobooks, you'll have to use aggregate distributors like Findaway Voices or Publish Drive. In those instances, I'm not sure if it changes for the royalty on other platforms, it's a 50% royalty minus aggregate distribution fees or any type of revenue share. So in Findaway Voices, it's an 80-20 split meaning that you get 80% of that 50% uh, on the sales and find a way voices gets to 20%. Now for publish drive, it's a little bit better of a deal because they have just a subscription fee that you have to pay every month. And I think it starts out like 15 bucks per month for one title. So that's not bad, especially if you're driving a lot of sales through something like Barnes and Noble. So to be clear, there's no direct distribution for Barnes and Noble for your audiobooks. You gotta go through an aggregate publisher for now. It'd be interesting to see if Barnes and Noble Press ever embraces the digital narration that a lot of platforms have been taking and adopting. For instance, Apple, uh, Apple Books for Authors is doing it, Google Play Books is doing it, and of course in a closed beta, KDP is also doing it. So it'd be interesting to see if there's a direct route to Barnes & Noble for audiobooks eventually. Now, how are account holders paid? They're paid 30 days after the close of the month. So if you make a sale in January, you're going to get paid in March. And you get paid one way, electronic funds transfer, otherwise known as direct deposit. So if you got a bank account, you'd be able to fill, fulfill it that way they do have a minimum payment threshold of $10. Wow, we burned through a lot of that information really, really fast. I told you it was gonna be a shorter episode this time around. Uh, I really think that Barnes & Noble Press is something that a lot of authors are sleeping on. A lot of authors really haven't put too much time or effort into it. So I would recommend that if you're kind of looking at some different areas that some authors aren't touching, and hoping for a little less competition, then Barnes & Noble Press might be the option for you. Hey, to get access to my video streaming service, theselfpublishinghub.com, you can get it for $9.99 per month. Remember, it's the one, the only, theselfpublishinghub.com. Here are my final thoughts, although I kind of gave you my final thoughts. I like Barnes & Noble Press. Yeah, they're a little slower. And yes, the account setup is a headache for some folks from what I hear. It wasn't too bad for me, but that's been quite a few years since I last did that. And considering that they are paying you 70% royalty for your eBooks and you're getting a little less of a royalty through the print books, uh, it's still pretty good. It's very comparable to a place like KDP. Will it replace that income? I don't know. You're gonna have to find out for yourself. This whole journey of an author should not be reliant on other people. Some guy on YouTube telling you, well, this is going to work, this is not going to work. It takes trial and error. You need to find out for yourself and do a little bit of testing. But I truly believe that Barnes & Noble Press is certainly a place worth looking into. And uh, speaking of other places worth looking into, we are going to continue this series next week where I'm gonna be talking about Google Play Books. How do they compare to KDP as well? Well, we're gonna cover that in next week's broadcast. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale and I will chat with you next week.